Buckle up and hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get out of hell free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live life to the fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts and that God put that dream there, not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real, it is living, it is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through, of all people, us. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier-than-thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people but he is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church.
such a time. Welcome to East Baptist this morning. We're excited you chose to come and worship with us. How many of y'all are on vacation? Should be getting smaller and smaller. Oh, a lot of people on vacation. Good job. We define that as a month or less on Fort Myers Beach at any given time. So um, fill out one of the pew cards in front of you and drop it in the offering basket. Uh, most important part of that envelope, though, is for the empty space in between so you can write any prayer requests you've got going on in your life. We want to join with you in prayer. Write those right there in that empty spot. Uh, and then if there's any changes to your stuff, address change, email address change, put that stuff on there, those of you who are normal and here all the time. Put that in the box as well. Good stuff? Hey, it's sunny, right? Weird. I know, it's weird. But we're enjoying it. Here's how we welcome at Beach Baptist. You and tell a neighbor something about you, and I prompt you with that information. Today, you're going to tell them your favorite condiment. I said condiment. <laughs> I know you got excited. I know, I know, I know, I know. Condiment. Between mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup. I'm going to give you three options. Mayonnaise, mustard, and ketchup. Go.
And God, thank you that you are forever mine. In your name we pray. Amen. Y'all be seated. Kids, where are you? I mean, besides you. I mean, you're like, good. There you go. Say, come on, Mary. You got to prompt her sometimes. We got to learn that one. Run, come on, step it up. She only loses three a week. So, I'm going. I'm having my own little worship time right now. Y'all leave me alone. Y'all just leave me alone. Oh, it show it, show it. <laughs> How many of you are thinking, did he make it? <laughs> Nobody? All right. <laughs> I'm just going to let that hang there, all right? I'm just going to let it hang there. Just, what was that? That's all I want you to be thinking. What was that? Um, no, you, you know the phrase, right? When pigs fly. I'm from Kentucky. We, we use when pigs fly every now and then, but we use another one. When monkeys fly out my butt. I don't know where that one came from at all, but when pig, it's, it's a phrase you use when, when it's something that's most likely not going to happen, right? Like, for instance, if one of my kids comes up to you and says, hey, dad said we could have another cat. You can say, when pigs fly, right? Or, bless your heart, one of those would work at any... If you've been here for a while, somebody can explain what bless your heart means. Uh, it's, it's just probably not going to happen. You know, it's, um, but, I, but I would argue that the word miracle has lost some of its meaning or some of its power uh, around our culture. And, and part of that's probably our fault uh, in, in the Christian world. Uh, and maybe, maybe we need to maybe recenter on that a little bit. Now, Part of that's because the word gets used wrongly a lot. And then also, it's a little, it can get a little just weird, right? How many of y'all, whenever somebody says miracle, do you, do you kind of get weirded out sometimes? Well, I'm, I'm really going to weird you out, uh, I think, today because I'm going to talk about a, a, a version of miracle or a type of miracle uh, that has to do with the, the creepiest part of miracle. Meaning the, the, the dark areas of life, the, the power of darkness, Satan, right? And how God delivers us miraculously. So we're, we're actually going to talk about miracles as it pertains to dark forces. So a lot of people would say this is the worst, because I think there's, a, there's quite a few different miracles. There, there's miracles of healing, right? Y'all, y'all know about those, right? It's, it's when, you know, someone's sick and you slap them on the head and, and they get better. Right? There, there's, there's miracles of um, uh, provision. Uh, it's when you don't know how something's going to happen, how you're going to be able to afford it maybe, or how it's just going to come. And then all of a sudden it just kind of does, right? And, and let's see, Corey was talking about that miracle just past week, right? You were talking about somebody. Uh, Corey doesn't go by a, this is what I've got to have to live type scenario and then all of a sudden it just kind of happens and that freaks people out but that is a miracle of provision today miracle of deliverance is what I would actually call that because and we kind of touched on this in Sunday school our lives 
um, are being bombarded by, by two forces, and we don't ever talk about that ugly force very often. You know, we like, since we've been talking about favor, you know, it's, it's really good to live in favor, isn't it? It's like, oh, and now, now that I'm living in favor, I'm recognizing it's there. But listen, because now you're recognizing living in favor, you will also recognize the evil forces that are trying to take that favor away from you, right? We called it flesh a lot. We, we did a lot of studies on flesh and the old man and, and the, or the, the power, that, that sinful nature that lives inside of you or is, is, is still there. That, but, but in reality, there's, there's two forces on the planet, and it's good and evil, bad and good, God and, God and Satan, however you want to look at it, and you must be cognizant of both at all times. You cannot let, Paul will say it over and over, do not let your guard down, Right? Because uh, if you let your guard down, what's going to happen? He's going to sneak in there. Satan's going to, dark, the dark forces, whatever, it's going to just d- distract you. Second uh, Thessalonians this morning was talking about don't get distracted by, by bad teaching. It, that's dark forces, all right? Don't, don't get distracted by things that can pull you away. And, and for so long, I think as Christians or e- even myself, I would focus so much on the good of what God's doing. And, and, and then that's good, but you got to know that he's there. Because I promise you, I think the greatest deception that Satan's ever done is to convince the planet that he doesn't really exist. Um, the, the greatest lie that's ever been told is that this dark force is not there. Uh, and you just have to, you just kind of have to be who you are. You've, gotta, you, you, you've got to just focus on God or just look to the good or any of that stuff. And the fact that Satan has even been able to do that. You can see it in your culture. It comes out of people's mouths. It happens. And I think that's part of it. Um, but that whole, I'm using the word miracle wrong. Um, like if, let's say you went to the mall and all the parking lots were full. But as you were pulling in, a spot opened up. Two from the door. It's a miracle, Right? That's not a miracle, right? The definition of a miracle is God intervening, right, into the planet's affairs or into your life. That is a miracle. God intervening, taking or doing something, what you would say miraculous. So you pull into the mall and every single spot is full and all of a sudden they part. (laughs) That's a miracle, right? All right. Big difference. The other way, somebody left Macy's at just the right time. The other, God intervened. But I still believe, and I, I firmly believe, and many of you may not believe this, but I believe that we, we still serve a God who intervenes in our life. He intervenes on the planet. He does things that aren't explainable, all right? And, and, and that's good. That's good. And today we're going to look at the things that he intervenes in that are miraculous in your life. And we'll talk, I, I think there's a bunch of, as I just said, those, those definitions of miracle. Maybe we'll look at a few of those over the coming, I don't know. I'm not really good at planning series. I'm really good at looking back and going, that was a series. Right? I, I like it when that happens. I, I can't pre-plan. Wes and I have been planning a series since August of last year. Right? Still hadn't done it. Still hadn't done it. But we've done three or four. We just didn't know it. So th- this one type of miracle we'll kind of talk about today. Um, and see, look at Ephesians six twelve, kind of like the, the foundation or the backbone of, uh, of where we're at. For we are not fighting. And they got the verse numbers up there today, so that's pretty good. So, yeah. Wow, seriously? Just make sure there's no slides with no verse numbers up because we'll be in trouble. <laughs> Mally says she did that. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits uh, in in the heavenly places. So we basically, what he's saying is, your boss is not your enemy, your in-laws are not your enemy, that person that always fights with you on Facebook, they're not your enemy. It's it's something else. There there is something else going on. You and I have a tendency to use our, our man eyes. We call them the man eyes, the physical eyes, and, and we put a face on the evil. 
and it has to do with your face or my face, depending on who we're talking to or what you're doing. But, but Paul would say, that's not the fight. That's not where this is happening. The problem is happening in a higher realm, in, in, a, in an area that's, that's a little scary, in, a, in an area that you don't really want to talk about, in an area that sounds hooey, kind of dewy. We also say hooey dewy in Kentucky. Louis is dead. Louis's dead. And you can't say it's all hooey dooey Louis. That doesn't make any sense. Hooey dooey is hocus pocus. See? Hocus pocus focus. <sighs> Whatever. So it, it, this is in heavenly places. So we're doing battle. So you're, there's a battle going on, and you're in the middle of it. You understand that? Now, I, I don't like the people who say, we're here, and there's a battle here and here. And it's just happening. I don't like that. Paul kind of alludes to the fact that there's a battle. It's here and here, and we're in the middle of it. It's like happening around us, not above us, but literally we're being affected by it. And I, and I think we'll see that, and I think Paul says it a few times in here. And, and there's some things that it talks about what they do, the, the, this, this forces. So let me, let me jump there. Um, because the other thing about miracles is that, or, or the dark places, we have a bad definition of who they are. I mean, the Bible clearly lays out there's a devil, a Satan, and then there's demons, right? Uh, and the Bible talks about them in two places, Isaiah 14 and Revelation 12. I didn't give you those. Don't worry about that. Um, where, where it talks about that there was, a, there, there was a, this, this being, Lucifer, uh, which you now know as Satan, he, he, named, he said five I will statements, and they were all, they all were about I will, I will become like God, I will be better than God, I, in, in a nutshell, he was comparing himself to God and, and to the fact that he could do it better than God, so he started this competition with God, and God being God said, I win, and kicked him out of heaven, uh, so, <laughs> It was a quick fight. Um, but he took with him a third of the angels, and so just about everybody in the theological or scholarly world believes that demons are those guys. So demons are the angels to God. So demons to devil is angels to God, if you're doing similarities. So that's what you've kind of got. So there's a lot, there's one devil, and then there's a bunch of demons. And so here's where I think at churches we make a couple of mistakes. We, we, we sway one way or the other. Number one, we either overemphasize demons, right? Or, or, or we, we describe them wrong. They're not the spirit of the dead. You ever said you had this family member who was like, like really bad, and you're like, oh, now he's a demon, right? And if you had a really good family member, now they're an angel. You ever classified people that way? No, you haven't? You lying. Yes, you have. <laughs> Right now, you're going like, Uncle Bill, yep, he's a demon, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Julie, she's a good angel. Yeah, yeah, no. That, they're not the spirit of the dead. They're, 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 ever, they're already been created. You're not, he's not, he's not, he's not uh, rallying or recruiting demons from you as, as you die. Okay, so that, that's a little weird. Uh, but in, in church cultures, we either overemphasize demonic influence, which is a problem, right? You know, something, uh, something happens in your life, and oh, that's the devil, right? I'm broke. That's the devil. That's the demons. They're, they're getting all that. No, you're broke because you spent too much money, right? You had this much money, and you spent this much money. That's a problem. That's not a demon, right? Now, there may be a demon inside of you that's making you buy too many dresses, shoes, or hey, hey, guys can wear dresses. I wasn't talking about women. <laughs> what? What? Oh, okay. you're going to have to keep me up on the stuff you're going to heckle me with, mister. I can't. <laughs> I'm with you with the other stuff. And then Marv Albert, I don't even know who Marv Albert is. Now, if you just said that guy that plays basketball, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. See, if you said Dennis Rodman, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. I got you, got you, got you. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Where was I? Oh, the demons, the demon thing. So, so there, just because something happens, you just can't blame everything on a demon, right? That would be stupid. Right? The devil made me do it, right? Contrary to popular belief, the devil did not make you eat the whole pie. <laughs> for example, I just took my son for his bachelor party to the Keys, and on the way to the Keys, we stopped and bought five dozen, say it with me, Krispy Kremes. 
<laughs> what? Did not put them in the trunk. I'm gluten free. <laughs> not currently. <laughs> Guess what we did on the way back? About five more. About five more. They're having a special. <laughs> Listen, if you don't buy one and get one free, you're literally leaving donuts on the table. And that's sinful, right? But contrary to popular belief, the devil didn't make me do that. The orange light out front did. <laughs> right? And the fact that that's the, one, that's the only one you're going to pass for a long time anywhere around here. Unless you're going that way. So we can't be blaming, you can't just be blaming everything that goes bad in your life uh, on the devil or on the demons. Now the second thing is, you can't, you can't blame nothing on them. And that's the other problem we have. We ignore it. I told you in the beginning. So nothing has demonic influence. So we don't address it. So we don't look at it. We'll find another reason. And here's the problem. When you find another reason and the core problem is a demonic influence or a darkness influence, when that's the core problem and you don't address it, then the problem will stay there. You ever known anybody who doesn't fix the real problem? You, right? No, you just thought of somebody you know, right? right. I, I'm going to tell somebody to listen to this message. How many of y'all just did that, right? Yeah, okay, good. Say yep. Yeah. But not you, right? You're, you're just lucky you're here to know to tell them. I got it. Uh, but yeah, so we, we, don't, we don't fix the core, and we don't, if we don't address, and we don't deal with, and we don't actually talk about what it is, it's never going to get fixed. It's never going, to, never going to take care of itself, right? So those two things happen to do. So here's what, here's what, here's what demons do. We gotta, if we're going to recognize it, we got to see... Uh, what demons do. I'm going to give you three things, and it's not all inclusive, but three that are major with you that I think you'll see. Number one, um, they tempt you to sin. Okay, so when you get the temptation to sin, Paul actually talks about it in 2 Timothy 2 a little bit, if you want to read that. Um, he, he, he just says that, 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 the, that demons or the, these people that are going to come to their senses, or they're going to escape because they've been trapped by. Now, he's talking a lot about lost people, but it crosses over a little bit because there's so many places where, where Paul talks about people who have been, who've been pulled away. You understand that? You can't get pulled away from something you never had. So you can't just be talking all about lost. So it is possible for you and I to get tempted by sin. So if you're going to personify a word like sin, you need to understand where it comes from. Right? So it's, it's not the substance that you're tempted with. It, it's the sinfulness of the substance that you're tempted with. And the core of that is the darkness. You know, it's it's, 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 it's going to be hard for you to, I, it's hard for me to say demonic a bunch, right? Has that ever entered into your language throughout the day? Right? There's a demonic influence over my life, and I really want to punch you in the face. <laughs> right? Right? Or there's, there's a demonic influence over my life, and, and I, really, I, I really think I need, we talk a lot about drinking, you know, need to have a drink, right? Core problem there, need. I, I, I need to, whatever it is, that's a darkness influence, right? We called it flesh for a long time here, but let's be real honest. The influence of the darkness of this world tempts you to do things that the Holy Spirit says, maybe not. Let's not do that. So there's that other side. There's that pull. Paul personified it with flesh. Paul per might I get so quiet. Are you creeped out? Okay, good. Don't get creeped out. They tempt you. They, they, they pull it. And Paul would say, or, or they're the ones that are inside your mind going, you deserve it. It's okay. Touch it. Grab it. Take it. Do it, go it, whatever it is. It, they're, they're, they're the little whispers, right? Here's what's really bad. I know that the dark will, will minimize it in the very beginning to try to get you to do it. Anybody ever heard that? It, I'm talking about in your life. Where it says, listen, it's okay. Everybody else is, 
You know what? And it, you know what? It's nobody else's business what you're doing. Anybody ever heard that one? I mean, anybody ever said that one? Right. That, that's, a, that's a temptation. Now, here's what happens. You do it, and then all of a sudden, they switch it, and they elevate it, and they go, God will never use you. God will never, God will never forgive you. See how bad you really are. You ever had that in your heart? Where do you think that come from? It came straight from them. That's what demons do. They, they, anyone ever said, I'm battling those demons in my life? Are you afraid I'm going to ask you what the demons are? I don't care what your demons are. You, know, you, you all have them. There's enough to go around, I promise. If you meet somebody who says, well, I don't have no demons in my life, you need to run from them, right? Because <laughs> they're coming, right? And they take your demons and go home, right? But, but, but they do. So they will, they, will, they will tempt you from that, and they'll pull away. Uh, they, they communicate and tempt you, and, and, this, and the devil lays these traps, and the demons pull you into it. That's just, that's just the nature of what he's after. That's his, that's his desire. That's his goal. Second thing they'll do, they will distract you from God's will. Now, second, in 1 Timothy 4.1, I did give you this one. Um, she, I didn't even give her these points. She just sticking them up there. It's so good. So they will distract you from God's will, if you're looking at point number two. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, when are the last times? Now. Good, good. Is it last times now because things are going to hell? No, it's last times now because Jesus isn't here. He left, so last times. Right. In the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. What? Demons are going to start teaching? Of course they are. And Paul's talking about people who, who believed in Jesus is it for them. They, they came to this one day where they were like, I want nothing more than Christ in my life. I believe that he speaks into my life, and I believe I can manage through this world with nothing but him, and I believe he is going to save me from death when I die, and I believe he's Lord over my life. So he's talking to people who said that one time, and then started to say other things as well. Like, well, I mean, he may not be the only one, and it's okay if you don't think he is. Or they would take some of their Christianity and then they would throw some religious stuff on top of it, right? They would say, I, I know Jesus believes, but you can't go to church without shoes on. <laughs> I threw that one in just for me, right? <laughs> whatever it is, whatever it is, it's, it's a de deceptive teaching. It's anything that, that would take away the primary focus that Christ is number one in your life. And, and you don't need anything else to follow but him. You don't need to mix it up. You, you don't need to add other stuff. You don't, you don't even need to look at other religions and go, well, you know, that's some good stuff over there. You know, it's not bad. Um, we like to watch um, the, the stories of Scientology. Anybody a Scientologist in here? You're not a Scientologist. You're too young. They don't take you yet. Right. So I can't offend anybody. That's good. So, you know, they, they have an entire channel on it, right? And it's so cool because they do teach you how to be a better person, right? It, don't argue with people. And, like, there's this teaching that says um, if you want a happy life, don't argue with your wife. I know it kind of run, rhymes, right? I mean, hello. <laughs> There's a lot of sense there, right? And, and what happens, it, Sharon gets mad at me because I'll get mesmerized by it. I mean, I'll pop it on, and, and I'll just be like, oh, good stuff. You know, they're telling the truth there, right? But she'll be like, I'm not sitting here. I'm not watching this stuff. And that ought to be our attitude, right? Because you can get lured in. That, that's what it, they will distract you. That, because motive is what you ought to be after and their motive is not to get you to follow christ the demon's motive is to distract you the demon's motive is to get you to take your mind off of christ and stick some other stuff in there you know and maybe maybe some of you maybe you know somebody we'll, we'll just say maybe you have a friend 
that used to have a, a pure faith. You know what I mean? They, that, that's all they had. That, that was just Christ. But now you've noticed that they're, they're reading other books, right? Or they're, they're putting other stuff into their life that, that's, not, that's not Christ. And they're just kind of becoming a better, rounder person, right? The Bible says that, that that's going to happen. That, that you're going you're to believe in Christ and that's going to be enough, but then it's not going to be enough. And they're going to distract you, and they're going to pull you away, and they're going to have you uh, do some other things to help. So they're going to tempt you, they're going to distract you, and this, the third thing they're going to do, they're going to inflict suffering, literally. Now, this is where it gets a little creepier, okay? But they are. Matthew 17, 15. This is about a dad um, who, who's hurting be, because of his son. Here's what he says, I think. Did he say it here on our screens? Yes, he did. Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. Now, when you quit laughing because you're picturing the guy, right, falling into a fire, how often can you fall into fire? I mean, think about that for just a minute. I mean, if you fall into fire and then into water, that's probably good. Okay, I digress, but I read that and I find it funny. But anyway, he says, he, he's having, he, suffers, he suffers terribly. Next verse says, I think I gave you 15, 16, and skip 17, right? So 16 says, I didn't? Come on. Anyway, so here's the story. He brings him to Jesus, and Jesus says, bring that boy over here. And Jesus rebukes a demon. And he says, come out of him, and immediately he was healed. So, we know that it's possible that a demon can actually inflict physical suffering on you. You ready to start blaming a lot of stuff on demons again? Right? Jesus rebuked it, boy, and it left him in that moment, boy, as well. Well, what's that look like in, in your life and my life? I think it still happens. And I think it happens way more often than you and I want to even admit that it happens. They inflict physical suffering. And that stinks. That I can just be walking around and then all of a sudden, or for some reason, I get a physical infliction because of a dark force that's around me. Just near me. I mean, I'm a Jesus guy, right? I shouldn't have to deal with that, right? Well, it's not fair. But th this guy, and it, we're, there's good news, good news coming, so just hold on. This, this guy that rescued that boy also, also, hold on, can rescue you because he's still alive. It's not just a story that happened before that you don't get to partake in. He can still rescue you. He can still deliver you. Here's the problem. You've got to understand what the core problem is, and you've got to invoke it. You've got to, you've got to ask. Now, that talk about unfair. You mean I've got to say, I've got to do something to, to fix this? Yeah, you do. Because that's how you understand the fact that you're not ignoring it anymore. I mean, if you're not going to talk about it, if you're not going to use the power that's given to you or the authority that's given to you, if you're not going to do that, then you'll never talk about it. But Satan wants to try to influence or inflict injury or pain or anything else. Listen, demons influence depression. Demons influence anxiety demons influence now, now i'm not saying if you have depression the only thing you need to do is pray that wouldn't be very smart Here, here's no man, i'm gonna get there in a minute let's just say that what do you do what do you do so we know what demons do they tempt you they distract you and they inflict suffering all right so those things are kind of going on there's other stuff like i said but let, let's just i mean i'm small minded i need to work on about three things at a time so let's work on those three right? And so what do you do, right? Here, y'all are being really quiet. I hope you're taking notes or something, going to sleep. 
Should we be afraid? You know, should we be on guard? Um, let, let, me, let me give you one thought. Because for those of you who are in Christ, because I understand that in this room, not everybody may be in Christ. For a moment, let me talk to you. If you are in Christ, you've been changed by the Holy Spirit. You've been one of those guys who said, I want Christ in my life to take over. And I believe that he's it. I, I want you to feel the weight of the authority that you have over this. All right, you need, you need to understand it. Because as we fight it, you need to understand you're not fighting with what you know. You're not fighting with your own power, right? In fact, Matthew 10, 1, what's that say? Yeah, Jesus called them together, and he gave them authority. Notice the word he didn't say, power. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. To cast out evil spirits, heal every kind of disease and illness. So, so Jesus lends them some authority to use his power. Let me just unpack it. Let's say that I'm a police officer, right? And I'm standing in the middle of I-75. <laughs> I'm a stupid police officer, but I'm standing there, all right? And I have a badge, and there's a, there's a tractor trailer. A Mac, okay, Mack truck. You might know what a Mack truck is. When I was growing up, Mack truck was the Coke of semis for some reason. Everything's a Mack truck. So a Mack truck's coming at me, and I hold up my badge, and I say, stop. Do I have the power to make that truck stop? No. No. He actually has the power to make me a memory <laughs> in this thing we call life. But what do I do have? I have authority, right? That I can stay there and I can say stop. Now, if he doesn't stop, he has to answer to a higher power, right? Right? You understand that? That's what you've got. So in this, in this, in this thing that we're talking about, you, you don't have any power. No, don't walk around. I, I'm walking around in the power. of No, you're walking around with the authority of the power, which is a huge difference. Because if you go at this stuff on your own, it beats you every time. You understand when God had the fight with Satan or Lucifer in Isaiah 14, how quick that was over? You go head to head with a demonic force or a Satan or the darkness. You go at him with your power, that fight's over before it even starts. He's got you and he's beat you. But if you start speaking into things with the authority that God has allowed you to borrow, that he has placed on your life, you speak those things. I've watched this happen. I mean, anybody ever seen this happen at all? No? Okay. <laughs> you really need to get out more. Listen, because this is what's happening all the time around you. This isn't just every now and again. It's kind of like favor. When you're walking in favor and you're understanding favor, as I said in the beginning, you start to see miraculous things happen in your life. They're not the same as favor. They're because of favor. And you start talking to God about your problems. Here's the point. The next time you're faced with a mountain, you're faced with a problem, you do two things. What's practical or what's natural. And then you ask for God to do the supernatural. You always do both. See, you and I only do, anybody ever been, okay, so this happened to me just this weekend. I'm actually studying this. I'm hanging out, and, and all of a sudden, my ears get all stopped up. They do. Now, I could have sat there and prayed till my ears unpopped, or I could go to Walgreens, buy some sinus medication, and pray. You've got those options. But so many times, you and I depend on one or the other. We need to be doing both at all times. Because you don't know. You, you know the stupid stuff that you cause, yeah. But you don't know when the influences on your life are something of darkness or just whatever. 
Why not invoke both? Why not do the natural that you know you can do? L- listen, I, I said he invokes on depression. He messes with and inflicts on depression and anxiety. L- let me tell you, if you have depression, seek help. And pray constantly. Demons want to get you alone. They want you to be isolated. They want to set you over there so that they can speak to you alone. You ever said that to somebody? Can I speak to you alone? Right? You say that because you don't want any other influence when you're trying to talk to them. And this is really hard because, let's be real, we have life going on. Right? We, we've got a job to do. We've got bills to pay. We've got kids who are running around like drunk squirrels, and we don't know what to do with them, and they're holding us hostage, and you don't know if you're going to ever get away from them. Whatever. And, so that, is that out loud? So that's going on, and, and everything else is going on in your life, and it's hard for you to stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? What is this? Maybe I should talk to God about this. The answer to that is yes, you should. At all times, you should be talking to God about the things that are going on in your life. Right? You get, you, you, something happens in your life, you get a physical ailment, mental ailment, physical ailment, doesn't matter. Do what's natural and ask for God to take care of the supernatural. Remove both at the same time. But, but honestly understand that it's happening all around you. And you and I are walking around it sometimes just being bombarded and we're not addressing it. And you have this authority that God has given you to say, leave me alone. Get away from me. Right? We all like to say, get behind me, Satan. Right? Right? But, well, yeah, but understand, he's always, he's not going to go, oh, okay, no problem. Right? I mean, he's going to disappear for that moment, but he's going to blink, or you're going to blink. You're going to take your guard down. you be right back at you again. Because he always, 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 he's never, it's, it's not like, oh, yeah, he's, he's not temptable. We tried, right? Or we, we, we tried to distract him that once, and, you know, he's really good, man. So we're going to leave him alone. No. Nope. He's going to come back at you again. And they're going to get one physical suffering on you or one mental suffering on you, and you're going you're gonna to recognize, man, ah. oh, well, we won't, mess, we won't do that again. No, he will constantly, constantly, constantly. You ever beaten one thing in your life just to turn around and find another waiting? <laughs> right, you ever said, well, it keeps happening. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Right, is that y'all? We kind of said that last week. You walk around, that's the story of my life. Same thing. Yeah. I, they really want to talk to you. I don't, I don't, no, I, don't, I don't. I mean, I hope it's your tax broker or something. <laughs> you got to get that phone. And it's okay to answer the phone in here. We don't care. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I lie. You can. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> what else? <laughs> what was I doing? Oh, yeah, preaching. Um, <laughs> so here, what else you got? <laughs> it's demons calling. Don't answer that phone. Don't answer that phone. It's demons calling. What? They're distracted. <laughs> it's his alarm. Wake him up. Wake him up. Tell him answer the phone. There you go. Don't <laughs> so here's what else. Now we all need to know who it is. Yeah, I really want to know what he's doing. So here, here's the other things you can do. First of all, don't assume everything is, but don't assume nothing is. Assume everything could be. And invoke both things. The natural and the supernatural. You've got to be on guard. you got to, listen, if alcoholism is your problem, 12 step all day, every day. And, and invoke the supernatural authority power of God who lives inside of you. And say, I am going to beat this. I am going to use all of my resources. I am going to tap into what God has allowed me to have to see, to get past the things that are messing with me, the, the, the promptings. And listen, God, God will prompt. The, I've done this a bunch, so I'm not even going to share those stories. But the promptings of God, those are miracles that are going to happen in other people's 
lives. Have you ever had this urge to just call somebody? Yeah? And how many of you have decided, nah, wrong time. Uh, no, nah, I better not. Nah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Listen, the, the promptings of God are the things that are miracles sometimes in other people's lives. And you need to be aware of those things. You need to be ready. Okay, so if you're going to follow and you're going you're to walk in favor and we're going to be aware of what demons are doing around us, you need to understand that God is using all this stuff to work things out in people's lives. And, and, and you get to be a part of that. Not, not he needs you to do it. You get to be a part of it. You're walking in favor and then you get to see miracles happen when you listen to promptings. Numerous times in my life, God would say text, God would say call, and I would do it. And it was the timing that changed everything. It was the timing that I saw the miracle in. And, and, and every single time I've ever done it, there was an excuse that I didn't have to. And I could have fallen on that. So you've got demons working in the area of their life, and then you've got God trying to let me see it in my life, and then you've got the demons in my life going, no, no, you don't want to be a part of that miracle, right? Or, or tempting me away or distracting me away. They're all over the place. And if you and I can start our focus to listen and understand that it's around us, but listen wholly to Him, we will then see the miracles happening in our lives. And we will see the miracles happening in others' lives. And we will see us being delivered from the things that are, that are, that are messing us. Here, here's the thing. I think it's John 1.5. Yeah, what, that's John 1.5. says that light shines in the darkness. The only thing that beats dark is light. So here, here's what we need to understand a couple of things. Dark is not opposite of light. Okay, a lot of us believe that, that it's either light or dark. It's not. Lo yeah. Darkness is the absence of light. Light always beats darkness. They're, they're, not, they're, not opposed, they're, not, they're not equal oppositions. One beats the other all the time. So that's a guarantee for your life. When you understand that the, what, whatever part of the thing going on in your life is darkness, you have the antidote. You have the beat to it. You, you don't have to wonder, well, I wonder if I'm going to be able to beat this. If it's darkness, it's beatable. If, it, if, if it's a dark thing, it's done. If it was a stupid decision on your part, it's get overable, wrong thing, right? But if darkness is there, light beats it every single time. We're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. We're already there. We know what's in our life. Uh, that was good preaching. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah. That was good. I don't know where that came from. What a demon. That's good. Right. So, <laughs> what a demon. But, but seriously, when we understand that we've already got the beat, that we've already got the win, read the rest of the story and you'll understand. We got the win. It's already in our column, and that's where we're fighting from. Go for it. Put this stuff, that, that whole armor of God, put it on all the time, every single bit of it. Guard yourself with, with the shield and, and put the feet, put the shoes on and have the sword ready uh, and put the helmet on, the, gird with that belt, get it ready. All times, have it ready to do this battle because you're in the middle of it. You can't get out of it, but we already know how you can win it. You just got to use what's been made available for you to do so. So let's all stand and we'll go. Yeah. Woo! Hee! Right. Hey, uh, real quick, I mentioned a bachelor party. There's a, if there's a bachelor party, then that means there's a wedding. Not a bachelorette party. Like, <laughs> always looking for a party. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> No, Sean Taylor's wedding, 6 o'clock Friday, this coming Friday. Yeah, this was his last Sunday as a single guy, um, his last weekend as a single guy. Poor feller. And now he's moving into that. So 6 o'clock, St. Michael's Episcopal over in Sanibel. Uh, everybody's invited uh, to come and see uh, Sean Taylor. And then, so, yeah, was that supposed to tell me anything else? Nope, that's it. Good stuff. Uh, then Wednesday night, 5.30, we're up here uh, Wednesday night. Is that right?
ask him. We're going to drive the church bus to the wedding. If you want to ride, just be here at the church at 5 o'clock. Jackie's going to drive the bus. <laughs> she asked. She just asked. What's that? Y'all work this out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Bus will leave at 5 o'clock so I can drive it. We don't care. Why 445? It's a 6 o'clock wedding. It's a 30-minute trip. She said 445. Let's be here. <laughs> Did you see how I just got smarter right in front of you? I mean, you saw it. Yeah. Right. I am basking in the authority of God right now. I have dispelled that demon of darkness. That's awesome. See, it works. I just proved that you can work. So, so what was I saying? Wednesday at 5.30 in this room, uh, bre- uh, in the breakfast room will be our meal at 5.30 and Bible study in this here at 6.15. So come and be a part of that. And everything else is in the bulletin. We'll want you to be a part of while you're in town or uh, while you're here because while you're here, you are family. Amen? Amen. Norris Allen, would you pray for us and send us out?